Hello, hello, it's me, 350 Legend, 158 grain smooth bullet, take three. There may be some more. I'm hoping there's some more. Anyways, I went out, I, I loaded up, oh, I forgot to bring him in. I loaded up a whole 10 of, uh, oh, wait, maybe I did bring him in, of, um, a ladder load. Ta-da. And I started at... This is what I said to do. I started at 22.4, went all the way up 25.1 of Little Gun with regular primers. See? Ta-da. And that, it's not important because it's not any good. It got me away. Anyways, I shot the first ones. Um, I'll just put them on there and I'll show it to you. But it was not nothing to write home about. But there was no flyers. Okay. And I got to thinking, I guess, you know, I'm just going to get radical here and I'm going to try something. So I got radical because I'm a radical kind of guy. So I just went in. It's a nice little shootout back. I took, brung the gun in with me. I went and loaded five more rounds real quick. And I dropped it all the way down to 20 grand. This point two tenths of a grain at a time was getting, I'm too old for that <laughs> when I'm this far off. So I, uh, oh, anyways, and. I'll show you the pictures, but the reason it made me do that is because, I mean, I got all the pictures close-ups of these because you probably won't be able to see it very good. Hey, that's what some people... Those primers definitely, to me, show pressure problem. They're flattened. And that was the second from the beginning. That was at 22.7. And the only reason I don't know about 22.4 is I didn't think about checking them because, I oh, I'm so low, I checked it. I threw them back in the, the bucket... So I couldn't know which ones they were, but this was the second one of my load I did. I'm gonna pull all these. I can reclaim this. One. And I, uh, man, I had flattened primers. What the hell's going on here, Delbert? So I uh, decided I'm gonna go in and get radical. The worst that's gonna happen is I'm gonna get a bullet stuck in the bore, right? So. Or the uh, and before that's going to happen, I think I'm going to have the action of the air not work. So, because I didn't try these, my bolt action. I bought a Savage old uh, bolt action at the at the at the gun store. God damn it, the gun show. Thank you. And I'm having some technical difficulties. I got to get a hold of Savage. Between every single round you fire the magazine, the back of it drops down. Boom. So of course you can't feed another round without clipping the magazine back in. I mean, the gun shoots nice other than that, but it's like, damn, I gotta send this gun back in. But I can't tinker with it, it's brand new. So anyways, and I've been working with the air. Anyways, what I did is I went in and loaded up on it 20 grains. I went all the way down to over two grains. The worst gonna happen is the damn bullet's gonna get caught in the board. No problem, I can, I've handled a squid. As long as you're prepared for a squid, squids are no problem. It's only when you try to fire a gun with a squid in the barrel that you got a problem. So I went out and loaded 20 grains. Now, again, I'll show you a close-up of the target. And, um... Yeah, I think it was... Yeah, because this is number two. And I used that... And it was... God, I don't have a copy of it. And I... Re I was just running out putting st stickers on them because, quite frankly, I was running out of time before I had to see the doctor and stuff. And uh, number two was not bad at all. I mean, the group wasn't bad at all. They were pretty darn close. I was like, you can see, well, it wasn't. It wasn't just here. You had one here, here. I mean, so it wasn't right, nothing to write home about. When I seen those primers, I'm thinking, whoa, my gut instinct is this has been going too fast all along is right, okay? So I just went ahead and so I reused this because I didn't think it was going to work. I wasn't even sure the damn bullet's going to come out of the barrel. I just put those dots on there so I could just reuse the same target I had. Well, look at what 20 grain did, and it wasn't any flyers. And I'll put a close-up of it. I mean, there was here. Let me put some yellow behind it and see it better. It's all one ragged hole. Okay, so it's like, wow. And uh, I got pictures of those. Number two brass, number two brass. I thought I had pictures of those. 
know I took pictures of it. Oh yeah, I do. Okay, I got pictures of the uh, the brat, and they look fine. They didn't look like you normally would have. You know, there's no pressure problems. Okay. So I thought, what the hell? The action's still working. Locked open. Let's push our luck. Let's go try 18 grain. So I did that, and I got that target. And again, I'll I'll give you guys a close up. And it, uh, it opened back up. Now, yeah, this is a reuse, and what can I tell you? But it still didn't have a flyer. Well, the 18 grain, yeah. Yeah, I used this target once, non-marked 18. What I did is I walked up there, I just took a picture of someone. So it'll be on here is, I'll tell you which one's the 18 grain. But it's the biggest one, most zoomed almost. It doesn't have any numbers on it. Okay, but so anyways, the 18 grain, again, the group wasn't stellar, but it was pretty darn good. Better than I've been getting, and there were no flyers. So I thought, well, what the hell? Let's go try 16 grain. And I did that. That's when the group opened back up. And the gun, the best way I can ex explain it, it still functioned, opened everything, left open. But it almost felt like it was so low recoil, it was unbelievable. And it almost felt not as bad as if you ever shot a black powder gun, where you have the initial bang, and then you have, for a few seconds later, the rec it was like a, a double thing. And I know with uh, H110, you gotta be careful of that, because it can be causing a second detonation, they call it. Even though technically gunpowder doesn't detonate, it burns. Really? That's how you call it detonation. Anyways. So, but the group got sucked anyway. So I think my magical mark here is gonna be somewhere between 16 and maybe 21 grains. So I might do me up a load, some, that go like maybe say 16 and a half. I don't know if I wanna go up a half a grain. That seems like a lot at a time. But it'll get me involved. 16 and a half, 17, 17 and a half, 18, and then maybe 18 and a half. And see what that gives me. Because I got to tell you, I could live with 18 grains the rest of my life, but the, the perfectionist in me just can't leave it alone without, well, I, that it can't be an acro load. I didn't work on it like two grain increments, right? Because that's just cool. And that could just be pure luck, but that's hello. I can see me through it. That's just, that's, I'm tickled pink. And the brass looks fine. So life's good, right? So that's what I'll have to do. I'll have to pull all those. And how I pull them, I bought a fancy puller, beat it to death, I get tired of that. What I do is I just put them in my single stage press, bring them up. I got a pair of uh, dikes that are designed for clamping down the metal clips. So I bought them when I had to wire when I wired my cabin when we rebuilt. And the inspector asked me, well, why are you wiring it, not doing it by electrician? Because I want bare egg and rice. Because I'm a ham, I just want to be able to say that I've wired it. If I'm gonna do it, I'll wire it. So I did, and I had to, it's one of the things they had. I mean, back when I learned how to wire, all you did is twist the grounds together, okay? And that was good. Well, it's not good anymore. You have to put this copper jacket thing over the top of it and it's crimp it, crimp it down, which is a good idea. It really is. That way it won't loosen up in these. And uh, besides, I use those copper jackets. They're really great when you're working with large uh, DC wire to get a good physical connection. Um, anyways, so no big deal. So I'll, I'll put this together. I have hopes now. And I uh, guess what? My other mold came in from Anoni. Yeah, it's out there being, um, it's going through its third cycle right now. It's been heated up. Now it's cooling down because that's how you cycle after you clean it. But uh, when I get done, I'm going to, I got me three sets of Anoni handles. I had to repair one of them. This is my first set. I just used the piss out of them. And the pin, like I like these because of better leak because they got pins in them, so the handle don't fall off and you're beating on them. Well, the pin actually broke. I used it so much it'll come out. So I just had to use me a finishing nail, drove it through there, to, and cut it off, and then took a nice file and filed it down so I won't scratch my little pea hands when I'm doing it. So I got to have three sets because I got my three moles, and I'm gonna try that 133 grain that's made for nine millimeters, and it it casts a nice. Well, I don't know why I got so cheap on this one. Oh darn, it's got lead in. I wanted to show you what the bullets look like. 
I don't know that I can do that. Nope, not with the, not without handles. I ain't got a pry bar. Well, I'm gonna show how nice these smooth. Just got lead in it. I don't know. Sometimes they leave lead, sometimes they don't. Some people say it's a great thing to do. Other people say, who cares? And anyways, these are some nice mold. Look at, look at that. It's, isn't that nice? Yeah, I didn't have to smoke these or anything. And it just drops right out. Plunk. And it'll get better with each casting session I do. This session will be better than the last session. And I wash them with dish soap, like they're gone dish soap, like you're supposed to and everything first. But, and, uh, yeah, this is the one that the, the bolts were loading now. I got 147 grain. And the nose on there looks like it's going to work. I hope it will. Maybe I'm just optimistic. I don't know. And those 133s, I didn't come up with any load data for them, but I was looking at those the other night. I goes, that would be fun to play with. Let's see what we can do with that. Worst comes to worst, I melt it back down. I mean, I could use them in a nine. They're just going to be harder than I need. So I got to get up, take my granddaughter. For some reason, my granddaughter has basketball practice tomorrow. It's the middle of, it's the, middle of, the, uh, of the holiday season, but, you know, all their coaches and stuff are voluntary, so you know if the coach is willing to give up their time, I can haul the kid there. And uh, what I have is, they, he shall call it some kind of bronchitis and my lung stuff. I got me a whole bunch of medicine, $60 of medicine, which ain't bad. I got four things, two pills and some other stuff, codeine, cough medicine. But uh, I have to wear a mask when I'm taking her to school. I don't want to kill the kid, okay? Because, you know, it's not real. It was nice out today. It was 50-some degrees, but still the ground's probably frozen. So I don't want to have to try and dig a hole big enough for her with it, you know, being this cold. So it'd be easier just to not, not infect her. That's what I tell her. The only thing keeping you alive is I'm too lazy to dig a hole your size. You know? She doesn't believe it. Anyways, I'll put these together. I'm pretty stoked about this, pretty happy. Still don't understand it. I looked on Hodgkin's websites where I originally got my original data, and I, I started right in the middle between, you know, a bigger bullet by so many grains and a lighter one, and it should have been right in the center, but obviously this stuff is not linear. And I don't know if I've said it or not, but I'm using Starline Brass and all this stuff. Um, just because that's what I use. And I heard it was decent, and I wanted to buy brass, and it was available, so that's what I'm using. When I got... Uh, the crony, I actually figured them out by hand. Where did I wrote those down to? What did I do with them? I know I, I actually sat here and figured it all out by hand because I had them all mixed in one thing. That's how I do. I like to set the crony out there, and the one matches the one here, two, two, three, three. Anyways, I did. Here they are. The 20 grain velocity is 2157 with a deviation of 23.3. I don't have maximum deviation. I don't know how to figure it out by hand. The 18 grain was 1969, deviation of 47.3. Now, the interesting thing for me was the 16 grain, which, as you see, the group was opening up a lot, but still no flyers, was 1798, but the deviation was only 16.7. So it had the best deviation of all of them, but the groups, not so much. So I'm looking, I'm thinking the 20 grain is about where I want to be. But we'll, I mean, I could load a bunch of those and be happy. I really could. I never measured how big that is. I could do that. <clears throat> I never measured it. Like I said, I shot until I... I was, technically, I was 10 minutes late for my doctor's appointment, but as usual, I waited an hour for him, which was no big deal. 0.67 inches. That is well within my ability to shoot. Now, maybe I was just shooting so poorly that they overlapped each other. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. If I, if I laugh, I cough. But, yeah, I, I can live with that. I can live with that. Probably should write that down somewhere. So tomorrow, if I'm not dead, after I do all my...
stuff with my granddaughter, I'm gonna cast some bullets, I think. It's gonna be nice now here in Michigan again tomorrow. It was 50s today, it's supposed to be nice tomorrow. So here, let me put all these pictures and all this stuff together. Thank you everybody for the help. Thank you definitely for the guy that suggested the, I would have never tried the, the regular primers because I was sold on had to use magnums for the straight wall cake. It makes a hell of a difference in the, uh, in the 450 Bushmaster. And I probably got another 150 or so magnum ones loaded up, uh, primers, which I am not adverse to depriming live primers. I've done it before. You be careful. I've, I'll knock on wood and never have one blow up. I know it's dangerous. So is everything else in life. But um, I'd rather just load them up. And I'll save those and I'll try those on my H110 because I, I know H110 likes Magnum stuff. Um, it made a big difference in some of the stuff I was using. All right, here we go. I must be getting lazy. The more I look at this of the 20 grains, the more I'm liking that group. I know I should do a ladder load on both sides, but it's just, it's, I don't know how it'd get much better. I'm pretty happy with that. I don't know. I know I'm tired, I'm gonna go to bed. This has been interesting. Again, I thank you all for the help. It was very appreciated. Thank you. I did try the crimp and extra. I did find it gave me 100 feet per second more velocity, which in another time that might be something I'd be looking for. I wasn't looking for it today. I was trying to actually slow it down a little bit. I'm much more comfortable with the, the velocities I'm getting at the 20 grains than I was before. I think the non-cast check bullet can take care of that no problem at all. Maybe these go a little slower, they won't beat the hell out of my steel so bad, right? Because that 20 grain load is only doing 21.57. Deviation is 23.3, I can live with that. I think I just got lucky today. I'll take all the luck I can get. Good night, everybody.